Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome. We're so excited to have you with us today in 3D. Oh, look at you're getting excited. Well, you know, Leslie Stevens is an amazing choreographer, dancer. She's a Broadway veteran. She's originated the principal role of Anne in La Cage Folle and the an ensemble role in Victor Victoria with Julie Andrews. Oh my gosh. Uh, she's just done some amazing work and we just love her to death at 3D Theatricals. So I'm not gonna waste any time with me. I'm gonna hand it over with Leslie. Leslie, class is all yours. Hey, you guys, yay. So um, thanks for joining me. Um, this is um, uh, part of my, my jam as a teacher. Um, and um, I usually integrate some aspects of this really, um, what I would call like the basics of, of alignment and um, anatomical awareness with most of my classes because um, I find it so important and I also don't find it esoteric or not involved with the actual doing. I, I find it the bridge to making something that you, you are um, unable to master or feel uncomfortable with, it's the bridge to, to changing that. Um, so my, I guess what I would say, um, I'll tell you a quick story of why I dork out on this so hard. And when I say this, I'm talking about applied anatomical awareness or applied kinesiological awareness. So it's not just the theory, though that's enjoyable, or just the images of how the body parts, but what it actually feels like and how you develop the ability to, to, the ability to feel it and integrate it into what you're doing. So I dig it where the rubber meets the road. And that's really, this will segue to my little short story. Um, of, I was, um, I came to dancing late. So I was a gymnast. I was a competitive gymnast. I was always athletic and I was always competitive, but I was not in show business or didn't really think about that as a kid. And um, when we moved to a different state and I started to get tall, it was clear that the Olympics were not gonna be my gig. So at 11 or 12, bummer, what else do I like? I liked old movie musicals. So I found a tap dancing studio, a not very good one that taught baton twirling and tap dancing. No offense to any baton twirlers out there, but. And I took a class and they said, shuffle, hop, step. And I was able to do it almost instantly. And I thought, oh, I'm a genius. I will do this. He's like, no, I'm not necessarily. I'm, I have a movement replication program in my head and many dancers come with that. Um, and then I took not good jazz dancing. And then I took not good ballet class. And then I, in high school, I, I encountered girls that could do things I couldn't do. And that was the first time I'd ever encountered that. Um, and I thought, what is this thing that you can leave your leg up and stand there? What is this? And they said, well, it's ballet. Really? So I then began the study late at 15 and went at it ferociously, but not with awareness, with ferocity and muscularity and athleticism and fire and all that stuff, which is great. And then I, however, <laughs> That trajectory took me to be a professional very early, to get some fancy looking jobs, to be able to make lines that looked finished, but I knew it wasn't right because I couldn't stand up on my own legs really. So there was this anxiety always that I wasn't really standing on anything that I was gonna make it happen, boy. So ultimately I developed um, a musculature that was really um, oversized for my bones and uh, I was trying to change that and trying to, to develop a real technique while I was working on Broadway, while I was working in Hubbard Street, while I was working in a real company and sensed, without getting into the details of that, I've spent the last 25, 28 years undoing what I didn't know and undoing, replicating some image out there to actually understanding what I'm doing. So that's why I dork out on this so hard because it makes a profound difference. And the biggest tech, technique um, um, improvements that I've made in my life happened in my 30s and 40s. Um, so at any point in your life, you can shift this. So the point is for you guys of all different ages, adults and um, younger people, is that it's your ability to be aware of your parts, of your body parts, kind of like a car. Your ability to be aware of that directly impacts your success of how you manage it, how efficiently, how well you can change styles, change forms, other stuff, because you're aware of your parts so you can make choices. 
uh, most of the time dance training that is associated with musical theater or rehearsals of learning your, it's a lot of monkey see monkey do, which is not necessarily bad. Um, and that's great to be open to just learn styles and just go with that mimicking lines, but it doesn't promote a lot of awareness. And if you want to get into any more complexity or command, you need some more awareness of your body parts. So I wanted to just watch, uh, uh, does anybody have any questions for me right off the bat? Cause I wanted us to watch a couple of quick three dimensional tutorials, and then we're going to try to find these parts in our own bodies and start to mess with what they, they do. Okay, sweet. No question? Yes question? No. Okay, great. So probably you have heard about the bones in your hips and all that stuff. I like to start with this because the awareness of everybody knows, oh, you're not supposed to stick your butt out and you're supposed to like pull this in and you're supposed to do something with your tailbone and, but don't tuck it, but do something with it. And then you know, you're supposed to turn out a lot and it, there, it's very, <laughs> it's very vague and taught with a lot of anxiety. So let's just look at the parts quick here. I'm going to go to share screen. Okay, here we go. All right. I think a lot of folks, the big, we can talk about, it's not, you can call the parts like Bob and Fred. It's not the name of them. It's that you have a clear visualization of what the shape of them what the shape and the three-dimensional shape is and then finding it in your own body. So you're having an actual awareness of what you're transitioning from seeing it to going, oh, this is in me right now. Oh, because you're the only one that can feel that. So here, let's take a look at this, just the structure. Hello, there you are. So you can see it going from a human to, I like this doctor too, he's very Southern. So you're walking down here, standing up. Understanding. What? Okay. So this right here is like your hip bones if you put your hands on your hips or you run into a counter and it's like, ow, that's that thing. That shape is slightly different in everyone, but that's the top of it. And that's called the iliac crest. And then this coming down here is your sacrum. That's your tailbone, which is usually buried underneath a lot of booty, unless you've cracked that or something and then you find it and it's way it's underneath it's kind of in between the butt cheeks right so this is where the booty is and this down here right here is what you would sit on your sits bones i'm gonna i'm gonna have him um spin it but i wanted you to see this image for a second because the idea of where the thigh bone is lines up over your foot and where the sit bone is which goes right under your skull and where the back of your sacrum is, which is like the propulsion of your body forward over the front of your feet. This awareness, this awareness, this awareness. They're in there. So I would call, you know, this is your sits bones. This is your thigh bone where the ball is. And this is your sacrum. But that's from the side. Yeah, because you look at it flat and the brain goes flat, but it is not flat. Okay, cool. I uh, go forward. How the different layers of the hip are arranged and connected. Great. So here you can see it this way. Here's again the, the place on your hip where you put your hands on your hips. This is if you've ever like, you can actually sort of feel this on some people. It depends on how much muscle, how much extra meat there is. And this is what you sit on, your sits bones. So if you're sitting cross-legged, does everybody have a way to sit cross-legged on the floor right now? Yeah, if you want to try that. Just as you're sitting there, and I'm going to do the same here, but you don't need to see my body. If you just rock back and forth a little bit, you should be able to feel that tick-tock of your bones. It doesn't matter how much booty you have. You can kind of feel that underneath there. That's this. That's this. This sit bone underneath. And I feel like that has a real connection and we'll do this in a, a little bit later, to the heels, when you're standing the heel of your foot, and also right up underneath this part of your head. So um, we'll be doing some games with that in a minute, but I just wanna get our body part things straightened out. Let me, let me let him go on a little bit. So you're sitting on your sits bones, also called your ischial tuberosities, but like I said, you can call it, you know, Bob or late for dinner, it doesn't matter, as long as you have a visual of what this is, and you're feeling it underneath you. That's the point. 
this awareness I find really profound because that you're propelling that over your feet as you move. Dancing in heels, this is pro being propelled over the ball of the foot of your heels when you're dancing. If you move from here, it's really different than moving muscularly from your chest or from somewhere else. It makes things really efficient and clean. And I find you can dance until you're incredibly old and it still works and doesn't hurt you. <laughs> so here we go, I'm gonna let this go on a little bit. Can help you understand how the hip works, how it can be injured, and how challenging recovery can be when this joint is injured or damaged. Well, I'm not This layer of the hip includes the bones and the joints. The next layer is made up of the ligaments of the joint capsule. And finally, these ligaments are covered by the important tendons and the muscles that help move the leg. Okay, so I just wanted you to see his image of spinning it. I have one other one I want to show you. So we have a couple images muscularly here. Um, I'm real picky. I didn't like anybody's. I like parts of them for different reasons. Oh, here's an ad. Okay. Okay. So um, here's just another visual of this. Is this what I want? The hip is a true ball and socket joint. This arrangement gives the hip the large amount of motion needed for daily activities like walking. That's not the one I meant. I'm sorry. Here we go. Um, Celebrities like Kim Kardashian. Oh, we get another ad. I apologize. <laughs> and Queen Bay are all owners of the much desired big booty. Ah, okay. Here we go. Located yes. a bit more laterally, we find another muscle, which is known as the iliacus. So she's a lot of fun because she's Australian. Um, this is the image I wanted. With the muscles of the hip, and these can be divided. Great. So this is just also to get an image because we're going to talk a little bit about, and this is as far as we're going to get anatomically, then we're going to go into um, f games to, or exercises to feel it. Um, but this right here, I just want you to get a look at this. This is the psoas, and it's hard to understand, but it has a big roll. Divided into two groups, the anterior hip muscle. I'll really? just let her. We'll start off with. Okay, I'll just let me do the talking. This is the, the iliopsoas that comes across here and down into the hip. And this is the iliacus, which lines the hip. This muscle is, um, has a profound impact on stretching the front of your hip structure. And if you sit a lot and you have like lower back pain or front of hip issue, this is frequently a player in it, but it's um, not, um, it's harder to find an awareness, but we're gonna play a couple little stretch games on this too, because tightness here can prevent your sit bones from being over the front of your feet to move efficiently. But it's not that hard to address if you understand what you're trying to address. So I just wanted to give this as a, a visual that's a little challenging to understand, but if you, um, if you can right now take your hands and put them, um, um, we're gonna come back to this because I wanna find our sacrum first and then we'll um, come back to this. Okay, yeah. So this image right here is from the back. So you're sitting on your sit bones right now. If you take your hands and you put them back here um, at the bottom of your spine, you have your, your, your booty, your, your, you know, your, where your buttocks are, but there's a hard part in the middle, kind of shaped like this. That's your sacrum right down there. And most of you may, may or may not know this, but that's your sacrum, that's the bottom of your spine. You don't wanna flatten the curves of your spine, but you wanna, you wanna be aware that that actually has a little bit of movement in this area, this SI joint, and it can be directed downward. It can be directed downward or, or it can be released and tipping slightly behind you. And it's being aware that that can stretch downward. And that feeling of, so if we can do that right now, if you can feel where your sit bones are, and then you can take your hands to your sacrum. Just if you can feel that you're gonna push down like your sit bones have little feet and you're just gonna push down on them and send your sacrum just stretching downward at the same time. It's fairly subtle, but you'll feel the muscles underneath your but engage a little bit, but it's not just to grab everybody, it's to press through their sit bones downward 
and have pressure of the sacrum stretching downward. It's those kind of awareness games that you're dealing on a more subtle plane with big pieces that change the way the machine works. So great. I think that's about all I wanted to say on the hip. So this is the iliac crest and this is the sacrum and these are the sits bones. Those are really the, the big pieces that I wanted to, um, to get across. Does anybody have a, a question on, on any of that? I can't see everybody, but I think if I do that, I can. I guess Gigi will let me know. There's one other piece that I wanted to share with you um, that I actually learned the clarified there's this year. One cause of and I'm sorry, there's another silly commercial. Overlook. If you want to look five or 10 or even 20. There we go. Here we go. This, um, the ankle. Ligaments, tendons, muscles, nerves, and blood vessels. All right. I want him to share this image. The joint is formed by the connection of three bones. This. The talus, the tibia, and the fibula. The top of the talus fits inside a socket. That it's is this idea that I want you to just look at for a second. And the fibula. The bottom of the talus sits on the calcaneus, the bone that makes up the heel. The talus works like a hinge inside the ankle socket to allow your foot to move up, called dorsiflexion, and down, called So just seeing what the actual mechanism is, the clearly. The socket is sometimes referred to as the more. Right. And here's the other image I wanted you to see. You know that little knob on your ankle that you sometimes, um, if you hit them together, they're painful or whatever, this little thing here. This is also a real reference point for alignment. And it's called, it doesn't matter what it's called, it's called your medial malleolus, but it's part of this bone, your tibia. It's not part of your ankle, it's part of your, this bone. And if your foot is rolling forward or this isn't in alignment, it has more profound effects all the way up the body. So I just wanna call your attention to this little knob you can find on your ankle on the inside, it's actually attached to this bone. So if you can right now, go ahead and take your hand and see if you can find on either foot, this, this little knob right on your ankle. Feel that and then just run your hand all the way along the tibia, the bone on the front of your shin. They are part of a team and the, the, the one on the outside is part of the little bone on the outside and the one on the inside is part of the tibia. So they are really reference points on the structure of your lower leg. And I, I had never realized that, but especially if, and I know Dylan, you've danced in heels, but it doesn't matter what shoes you have on, but your awareness of, of that, that it's not just that it's a good idea to have nice alignment in your ankles. It's not an aesthetic thing, it's a function thing. And it goes all the way up into the structure of your leg. So it's just an awareness game there. I think that's, uh, let me stop the share for a second. Does anybody have any, any questions on, on that stuff? I mean, I know it's basic uh, anatomy, but um, I just wanna play a couple of um, other little games about now that we've reestablished looking at what the parts are, I want us to, to find them in our own bodies because that's the deal, is to have awareness of where they actually are in your body. So it's not that we don't, you don't do these things in yoga or exercises, but often in dance training, um, it's left to here, meet this visual demand or make this picture without talking about the awareness that is driving everything. And it makes a profound, it makes a profound difference. So, um, or where are, is everybody sitting in a place where they can sit on their buttock? All right. I don't know if you really need to see me do it, but um, I'm happy to. There we go. All right. Great. That's pretty good. Okay. So just from sitting here, you can feel your sit bones. Yeah. Great. Great. Now, can you take, can you find where your iliac crest is right here that you're sitting on up here? See if you can without lifting your ribs, just see if you can send like you've got big um, suspenders and send these up towards your armpits. It's gonna use the muscles on the side of your body, sending this upward. But you, um, while you're doing that, can you put your hands on your ribs and just keep these kind of feeling easy enough to breathe? So you're really trying to make a different feeling from the iliac crest that you're really asking this to come upwards. And while you're doing that, 
see if you can visualize your actual pelvis, the actual bones that you're asking to move. See if you can visualize them and that they're going that way, like coming to your spine and upward. Good, and you can keep your ribs here, your hands here, so you don't need to tighten your ribs to make it happen. These muscles are much more emotional and like to get involved. Yeah, so you're reaching that upward. Good, now take one of your hands and put it down here by your sacrum and see if while you're having this energy coming up either side like uh, suspenders to your armpit, see if you can have this hand at your sacrum and just let that press downward. Keeping your ribs kind of comfortable and released. Great. And then right there, if you can rock a little bit and feel your sit bones, just see if you can feel your awareness and see if you can move the top of your pelvis just slightly over your sit bones and back. See if you can hold this length with the crests up and the sacrum down and see if you can just move that length and feel where your sit bones are on the ground. Cool. Great, 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 great. And you, you're probably going to get a little tired, right? Are you already exhausted? I'm a little exhausted just from holding myself up. Seriously. Like, seriously? Yeah. So um, these are, uh, it's a different way to engage your lower body. Great. I want to do um, one other thing while we're here, which is to, um, so if this is our foundation, this awareness of the sit bones, and we're helping our pelvis live in a kind of energized place, I actually have come to believe that the bones are not like dead weight or like non -exist. I feel like they are, they're living uh, tissue that can um, take direction. <laughs> so, um, so that feeling of your pelvis, that the crest coming up and the sit bones awareness on the ground and the sacrum driving downward against, that's like a stretched awake kind of pelvis feeling. Great. So if that's our base, then I want to add um, a connection to the top. So take your um, fingers right up to your, um, take them, uh, if you, we're trying to find, uh, if you put them right underneath your ears, like right by your earlobes, great. Now, if without hurting yourself, if you could drill a hole through your skin to where your fingers met in the middle, and if they just went up an inch at the top, you're, and see if you can just pivot your head there. What you're trying to do is give yourself a real feeling of the atlas and the axis at the top of your head, so that you're turning your head from this place, not from your chin, but from way up in here. Like it's a small place to turn your head from. Cool. And you can do a little tip forward or back. Any of this is also an Alexander. Great. So you can release your fingers here. I also like to do this is put my fingers on my ears and make an elf out of myself, which is just fun to do. But you're also creating another way to lift this where you're getting an awareness there. And um, so um, here's my another game that I like for this awareness. If you take um, the edges of your ears up here, and you just let them float up and, and hovering over your shoulders. It takes the head backwards without trying to shove the spine. So from there, that's the top, right? And then this sit bones are really the fundamental place. So there's a connection between your sit bones and that place at the top. Great. So just for the sake of getting to move a little bit, let's do, I don't know what you call this, like this activating the pelvis kind of, so we're going to have the iliac crest come upwards, the, sits, uh, the sacrum drive down, an awareness that you're on your sit bones, and then we're going to take this tall place that we found, good, and just take your arms all the way up on the sides and let your shoulder blades and ribs relax downward on that column of energy. But keep the hips going up. So I'm already tired doing this. And this is just your core supporting you Good, now just let, take one of your arms, it doesn't matter, take it down to the side and just walk your fingers out a little bit, leave both sit bones on the ground and just do a nice little stretch on the side of your body. But with that awareness of the iliac crest coming up and the sacrum stretching down and the sit bones driving into the ground. So we've done a side stretch a million times in our life, but it's trying to have a different awareness. Now, if you're gonna let yourself roll around and take a look at your knee 
see if you can feel that length still in your pelvis and feel the top of your head still connected to your sit bones even though you're letting it drop forward. Meaning your awareness is connected, yeah? Now just walk your hands to the front and use that awareness of your hips on roll yourself back up. Good, so all this is an awareness game. Let's go one more time, um, arms all the way up. Iliac crests are up, sacrum is pressing down, sit bones are driving into the floor. Um, let your shoulders come down and your ribs come down while you have that um, sense of your ears floating back over your shoulders. Take the other hand down and just stretch yourself all the way to the side with that connection in the ground. Release your ribs. It's the iliac crest coming up and the sacrum going down. And let yourself roll around. Let your nose point at your knee. You still have that driving into the ground for the sit bones and walk yourself forward and roll yourself up. So that's just a little um, game on the floor. We're gonna stand up in a, in a second. So if I were gonna make this into like C-spot run, um, I would say that you have the awareness of your hips, iliac crest, sacrum, and where your sit bones are. And then you have this awareness of where your head floats at the top. Um, uh, uh, one of my other favorite images is um, if you take your fingers to your cheekbones and your nose, and this is your face, can you let this, um, so you've got your eyes, your nose, and your cheekbones. Now what happens if you had this same face on the back of your head? Just go with me here. So if your eyes were out the back of your head and your nose also simultaneously had a back nose and you simultaneously had back cheekbones, and then if you take a look out your back eyes and smile, out your back face, that feels crazy. But the game is to create a dimensional awareness of where the center of your body is, not just move it back, move it forward, don't do this. Because that kind of awareness doesn't promote the technique moving forward. Okay, does anybody have any questions before we stand up? Yes, no, yes, no? Okay, great. So let me go over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. Um, I think this was a good place to uh, do. I tested this out earlier. So I think you can see I'm going to make me the bigger box so that I can you tell. Should, it. You should be. Uh, there we go. I, I think I messed with it inadvertently. Okay. Uh -huh, here we go. So great. Okay. Yeah, it was great. Okay, great. Sorry about, um, <laughs> yeah. Um, so the idea then is that you're gonna take, I'm always getting naked here. So you're gonna take this awareness of these coming up. Essentially what you're doing is you're taking an, an awareness of your pelvis and, you, and your sit bones and you're gonna play with that over your feet. And the idea is that you're gonna build a relationship between, okay, the, your awareness of the bottom of your feet and where I would call this like, where your sit bones are tracking your pelvis forward. So I like to say that the, if you're just standing here um, in a nice parallel, you can pick your toes up and put them down. I know I did this in a warm up earlier this week. If you can see down there to your, these little knobs, these medial malleolus, it's very normal to have this happen. Do you see that? That collapsing inward. And then if you're in, if you're in dance training, they'll yell at you, don't roll your feet and you'll try to do something else. But instead of doing that, if you can put like suspenders here on these and pick them up, pick up the inside medial malleolus like they're suspenders coming up to the center of your pelvis here. If you feel you're pressing to the outside of your toes, push your big toe down and let your sit bones take you forward. This is an engaged parallel and we wanna start with that idea. Yeah, I mean, they talk about this in yoga as well, so you may already have some foundational awareness, but I find often in dancing, we're trying to develop flexibility in the ankles without developing the awareness to support them. So from here, 
And the idea we're going to just pick our toes up off the ground, put them down, and then shift our weight from our sit bones over the balls of the feet and come back. Then you're going to let your knees slide in plie, leaving these hips up. And when you stand up, you're going to press through your heels, through the sit bones, and let that come to the middle of your feet. So we're trying to find two different places. This is sit bones over your heels. This is sit bones over the center of your feet. And this is sit bones over the balls of your feet. Yeah, so I mean, this is super simple, but the point of it is to develop the awareness of where the movement is coming from. And that becomes that, or that becomes that. And it develops a different kind of line and integration than if you just mimic the outside shape. Does that make sense? I know Gigi will let me know if somebody has a question. Okay, so as, so as a whole group, we're gonna pick up our toes, put them down, slide all the way forward, come back, plie, stand all the way up, push this a couple of times. So before you do anything, pick up the inside balls of your feet, the malleolus right here of your ankle, this edge of your tibia, pick that up and long, take your iliac crest up, send your sacrum down, feel where your sit bones are, release your ribs, yep, so they're nice and feeling comfortable, and we're gonna pick up our toes, and we're gonna put them down, and we're gonna shift our weight forward to the middle of the foot, forward to the front of the foot, and back to the center, and back to the heel. Now bend both legs, plie. Yeah, you should feel your sit bones over your heel. Standing up, push through and take your sit bones to the center of the foot, to the front of the foot. Roll it down to the center of the foot. Good, let's do that again. Toes up, put them down. Take this, sit bones coming all the way forward to the ball of the foot. And all the way back. Good, plie, when you plie, you can feel that connection to your heels. Stand up by pressing through the ground and come to the center of the foot. Then take the sit bones all the way to the front ball of the foot, pushing through the legs and down. Yeah, so this idea that uh, this amplitude of releve and plie comes from an awareness here as opposed to a muscular awareness here. <sighs> yeah, that makes a different thing happen. That makes a different relationship. I want to talk a little bit about the ball of your foot, like a... Um, Leslie, just really quick, Julie has a question. When you... Wait. Yes, ma'am. When you plie, where are your knees in relation to your toes? You put that ah, let me face forward. So they, they just slide. So I'm going to do the whole mechanism. I'm going to pull up the medial malleolus like um, uh, suspenders. I'm going to let the knees slide directly over the center of the ankle and standing up. So they, they're tracking directly over the center, directly over the center of the ankle. Does that, is there something more specific, um, Julie? Do they go past your toes or do your knees need to stay like at the front of your toes and not go past them? It actually depends on how, how loose your, your Achilles joint is. I mean, your Achilles, uh, how, how far they will slide and slightly with your proportion. In yoga, in Uskatasana, they want you to stay back here so you can see your toes. That's not what we're doing. Okay, thank you. That's not what we're doing. So when you allow this, really the, the feeling is that you have that iliac crest up feeling, kind of like that suspendery feeling, and the knees slide. And it's like if I had my hands on you and I wasn't your partner, the feeling is more that that's what's happening and the legs are allowed to slide, as opposed to PX90, where we like, oh, mm -mm, mm -mm. that's not bad necessarily, but it builds a different um, power around the joint being more closed as opposed to the joint being more open. Great. Thank you, Leslie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, okay, cool. So then from um, what I want to talk about, the, the ball of the foot. So the relationship between the ball of the foot and the ball of your thigh bone. I think is really um, profound. And I found that that made a huge difference in um, control and in line 
and in being able to work in heels for many, many hours and not finding stress in my joints because what was holding me up was downward pressure through the ball of the foot through the bones. So that may sound kind of theoretic, but what I'd like to do is everybody um, just take your hands for a second and just like, like rub right here on this diagonal of your hips. Whew. And this is, man, from so much sitting or so much doing this. Good, now I did this earlier, but if however you make a picture bigger on your phone, do it right here on your hips. Woo, okay, and then take it about two inches over to the side and do that again. So you're just encouraging kind of an opening of your hips. But what I, then I'd just like you to take your hands on the diagonal right here and just bend the legs up so you feel where the actual fold is, right? So the fold of the leg is actually, it's not out here. This is the edges of a harder structure. This is all the bending business, the bendy business is in here. So this, the bone, as we looked at those pictures, is it's a ball in a socket and the socket pocket is right in here. Um, but the, the acetabulum into the thigh bone. But what I have found in the practical application is that an awareness of the thigh ball, the femur ball, the femur head, and the ball of my foot changes my ability to be on my leg, as opposed to just having musculature try to grab and then try to adjust outward pieces, but an actual awareness of pushing through that the ball of the foot pressure in the floor is going right to the ball of the thigh bone. Yeah, so, so here's the game. And this is super basic, but the, it's not, that's why basic exercises are repeated all the time, because you revisit them at a higher level of understanding. So we're just going to do parallel plies essentially and we're just gonna allow our legs to slide forward and then using our sit bones to take the weight to the center of the foot. Then you're gonna take the weight, you're bringing your sit bones to meet where your, the ball of your thigh bone is. Then you're gonna lower it without backing up. And again, plie, this is up, sacrum down. Standing up, sit bones come to the center of the foot. Sit bones go to meet the thigh bones underneath this part of your head and roll that down. So we're just gonna do that four times. Plie, stand up and down, plie, stand up and down, plie, stand up, plie, stand up. We're just gonna do that four times and then we're gonna try to go from the bottom, just push all the way to the top. And bottom, push all the way to the top. So it's essentially four counts down, four counts stand up, four counts press, four counts down. You've done that all your life, but we're trying to have an experience holding your pelvis with awareness and moving your sit bones to where your thigh bone is and then controlling that down. And that's just reiterating the same idea that the pelvis is stretching upward from here and the sacrum is down, keeping it from flipping back as you lower. So it's super simple, but the idea is to develop some awareness. So we're gonna do it once and then we're gonna do it again and try to have our awareness also pressing through the floor. So here, um, let's start all together. I'm gonna to do two of them facing you and then two to the side. Great. So I'll start the first two to the side. And legs are, um, toes are down, inside ankles are up, iliac crests are up, sacrum is down awareness of your sit bones and you're going to let your knees slide one and two and three and four awareness here and standing up from the sit bones to the center of the foot and the center of the foot comes all the way the sit bones come all the way to the top of the thigh bones and then lower down and two and three and four and then plie let the legs slide iliac crest coming up sacrum is down standing up sit bones coming from the heel to the center of the foot, then taking that forward to meet the thigh bones, push and lower without backing up. I'll do the next two facing you and plie. This is coming up, 
sacrum is coming down and standing up sit bones are coming from the bottom to the center of the foot now they're coming to meet the right behind the ball of the thigh bone press push through the feet and lower the crest coming up and again one more time plie sit bones over the heels Standing up from the bottom, sit bones are coming to the center of the foot. Now coming to meet the thigh bone and press through the ball of the foot, pushing and lower and lower. Yeah, good. So this awareness changes the way you're moving on your feet. It doesn't mean you can't do dug in work. And I'll tell you that the part of the one of the uh, formative reasons I discovered this is I injured myself in a chorus line and I went back in about 10 days it, I, the details aren't as important as what I learned but what I learned is that I didn't need to use all this external effort to the outside of the body what I needed was to stand up more on the inside of the body and be on my legs and push through my feet, through the bones of my legs, as opposed to kind of sinking slightly in the hip. And that's how I managed to dislocate my hip. So this function doesn't make it any less dynamic, but it just has much more awareness in it. Does anybody have some, this is pretty, um, I mean, I, I could go on and on about this stuff because it um, I've watched it transform other people's bodies and technique and feeling and experience and movement and it has for me. Does anybody have any questions for me about this kind of stuff so far? I'm sure you've worked on some elements of this in any class you've taken. Gabe, uh, Gabrielle has a question. Mm, yes, Gabrielle. Where's Gabrielle? Unmute yourself. Hi, I'm right here. Precious. Oh, hello. Hi. So um, I, uh, I've been dancing since I was three. Sorry, I'm in my little bralette, which is why I didn't have to. Um, and my uh, left hip, there's a misalignment that I'm very, very aware of, and I'm always trying to correct it and make sure because my left hip, I'm super, super flexible and like bendy. I have like hyper flexibility. Mm -hmm. um, and so tendencies to happen, like I literally, I was just doing the exercise that we were doing and even just, ugh, you can't see, I'm trying to like position so that you could see, but even just going down, um, mm -hmm just going down, I notice that I tend to like dip into my, into my right hip just to kind of like overcompensate. Like there's always a kind of misalignment. And so I'm wondering if there's any simple exercises that I could do to bring even more awareness to the, the hip socket and kind of like make sure that those always stay centered and aligned, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. And I, I mean, that, that, that's exactly the kind of um, stuff we were doing, what we just did now. If mm -hmm. that made sense to you about standing up, feeling that this underneath your sit bones is, is standing up and going forward, yeah. um, you can also do it with your hands just on a table or something, and then do two with two feet, and then do one with one foot, which takes a lot more control oh, okay. if you're supporting yourself, and see if you can feel that you're not going to elevate from your muscles, but you're going to try to move the bones through the it. Hip, and the hips are going to go together, even if they're on one leg. There's still that idea when I had, when I said the, that the, the iliac crest that they want to come like, mm, mm -hmm. they want to go like mm, together and up, not just, uh, just not random tightness. They're going and eh, together and up. So that yes. idea, that happens when you're on one leg as well. Mm, and you can use that and you will probably find that there might be some muscle or things that aren't firing exactly, but that's, it's, it's not just blind repetition, it's asking your brain to make new neurological connections by being specific, like asking for specific images and they keep asking. This is part of, part of my fascination with this work is when I dislocated my hip, I had a lot of uh, nerve damage. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't in tons of pain because it was completely unplugged. So I had to rebuild that and there wasn't, any roadmap really but this kind of asking for awareness and continuing to try to integrate it to your feet on the ground i think might might help you and then you build strength oh, on top my of that cat. sorry oh my god <laughs> <laughs> oh my god we just um, no but I, 
Well, I Zoom. actually think that I actually think that putting my hands on a tabletop and maybe doing it um, on a supporting leg might be beneficial to me. So thank you for that. Sure, sure. Um, thank you. Anybody else having um, some question about something you want to ask? Him? Yes or no? Anything? Good. I'm so, not um, seeing anybody. Okay. So I just want to um, in our last. Um, we have five minutes. Okay. Great. Great. So. Um, I guess the other thing that I wanted to talk about, which would be in a class if it was a, in an actual studio, is the um, some other things about coordination that I think also change um, <clears throat> the dynamics of how the body works. So I had one teacher talk to me about something that I've adapted that I call the magic midline, which is like the center of the body. So if you have, I don't remember what movie that was where somebody was robbing an art museum and she had to like, you know, do yoga around all these laser, you know, these like laser beams that were protecting the artwork. Anyway, the point I say is that if you had like a laser, like a plane, it comes right from the center of your feet. I'll just go back over there. The center of your feet through the center of your pelvis and your hoo hoo, your perineum, all the way through to your heart, to your nose. And that's why you do something academic like this with your hands. It's not to be tedious and boring and look like a, a child in ballet school. It's the organization of the body that meets in the center because we're quadrupeds. So this organization is extremely musical. So the idea of the magic midline, I think is extremely helpful in aligning anything, um, any movement. So um, when you like, when you go to do a pirouette, this pressing down of the leg through the sit bone to the foot, it's this also this element of the downbeat of the music being met in the middle, in the center of the beat. And that's also when the head is released to spot. But that idea of coordination, even in simple movements that pass through this midline, it, it creates a sense of organization. So there's an inherent it's kind of like in, vo in voice training, there's always like the, the heightened shape of a vowel, even though you might be using other vowels or in between things, but you don't lose the shape. The same way there's an inherent this shape all the time, even if you never get into it. Even if you're doing cool and you're down here, there's this inherent magic midline point in your movement. And I feel like also a fundamental concept that makes things more organized. Doom, doom. Uh, so when you do, um, especially with turns, you're making a downbeat visible, but that lives at the moment that your body comes to a midline. So uh, this is another concept that I really like to work with in choreography and in, in, in technique class, is coordinating the magic midline with the downbeat. So that you're taking your, your quadricep, your quadrupedness, and anchoring it, the coordination, through a center point and anchoring that in the music. And that doesn't necessarily have to be academic. You could be making any shape in the world. It's the coordination. Because we're, no matter what, we're still, or if we all are lucky enough to have all four parts, we're all quadrupeds. We're designed to, to roll in opposition and pass through the center place. And the musicality of that is really, um, the musicality of that coordination is really powerful, which makes a basic thing suddenly look amazing. And that's, I guess, my final statement is that almost all Broadway choreography, it's simple steps done extremely well, unless there's a, or someone's specialty. Everybody's doing simple steps extremely well in the world of the play. Someone might jump out with a movement specialty. People are doing simple steps extremely well. This is not a hard step. <laughs> Done with incredible ferocity and attack. Very simple. Do you know what I mean? So, so is the how you're doing simple movement is profound. I I'm really hoping when the, the period of the plague has passed that we get to be in a room together that I might get to work with some of you. But I also hope some of this um, game playing, if you're going to take it forward, is when you're doing whatever physical exercise, see if you can bring some of the awareness with you. The awareness of where are you really at crest, what direction are they going, where's your sacrum really, where are your sit bones really. If you feel your ball of your foot in the floor, do you have an awareness 
of where the thigh bone, the top of it is. What about your head? You don't need to shove it backwards, but can you have an open awareness of it? Changing your awareness is always first, and then other things become possible. Well, that's my belief. Anyway, thank you. Any questions? Oh, Leslie, this has been great. What great information. Stuff you don't, we take for granted all of these things, but you know, that they just work. So to have you really give us the skills to focus on those, I just such a wonderful thing. And your generosity of spirit to share with that, share that with us is just so amazing. I'm going to just really quickly look around in the gallery, see if anybody has their hand up. Shrimp fork, yes. <laughs> he just teased me because it's an image I had of the sit bones being like a, you know, when you have a cocktail shrimp on a fork, you know, but that's, uh, it's strangely graphic, but yes, it's a shrimp. <laughs> <laughs> that's correct. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much, Leslie. I know that we will see you again.